Care for some wood pulp on your Sketty? Enjoy a hot lentil latte? Sipping a dirty chloroform teeny? When it comes to these culinary fakeouts, the joke's on you. You've probably suspected that the Parmesan cheese that comes in a can and doesn't have to be refrigerated might not actually be Parmesan cheese. And depending on which brand you buy, you might be right. Back in 2016, Bloomberg News reported that Castle Cheese Inc. was plumping up its cans of so-called 100% real Parmesan cheese with, wait for it, wood pulp. As you might know, goats can eat wood pulp, so technically it could be described as food. But you're not a goat. That's shocking. That's disgusting. Here's the thing. The castle cheese wood pulp appeared in the form of cellulose, which is commonly used as an anti-clumping agent in food. But content shouldn't exceed 2% to 4%, and it can't be added just to bump up the weight, and therefore profit, to the product. The company's 100% Parmesan also didn't contain any Parmesan. Instead, they used cheaper cheeses like white cheddar and mozzarella. For most of us, white fish just looks like white fish, and we count on grocery store labeling to tell us what we're buying. But seafood suppliers know this, and that's why they sometimes get away with mislabeling a cheaper piece of fish as something more expensive. After all, once it's fried up and drenched in lemon juice, even a professional chef might not be able to identify it. According to conservation organization Oceana, roughly 21% of commercially available fish isn't correctly labeled. This means when you drop $32 per pound on what you think think is Chilean sea bass, you might actually be buying tilapia, which sells for less than $10 a pound. Now you know you can just pick up the tilapia, ditch the packaging, and call it whatever you want. Speaking of not being able to pinpoint proteins, there's a good chance you can't tell the difference between beef and horse meat either. Let's just think back to 2012 and 2013, when the fine people of Britain were eating hamburgers that were 29% horse meat. And that had been going on for at least 10 months and possibly up to five years, according to The Guardian. Um. The culprit? Anglo-Irish beef processors, which wasn't just a backyard operation. It was Europe's beef processing behemoth. Some of Britain's biggest grocery store chains, including Tesco and Aldi, sold the horse burgers, which were made with meat from up to 40 different suppliers. And just in case that isn't gross enough, the supplier responsible for adding at least some of the horse meat was also mixing it with previously frozen beef that was so spoiled it was green. Mmm, anyone else craving a nice juicy burger right about now? Olive oil has a distinct scent and flavor, but when you're comparing olive oil with extra virgin olive oil, things get a little more complicated. You also might not be able to tell if your bottle has been diluted with, say, canola oil. That's not just a problem because no one wants to spend $17.99 on a bottle of fake EVOO. It's also because many people choose olive oil for its heart-healthy benefits. There was a lot of noise about fake olive oil around 2015, but we've since learned that most of the olive oil sold in the United States is genuine. But there are still some isolated incidents of fake EVOO intended for U.S. consumption. As Reuters reported in 2017, the literal mafia was labeling olive oil pulp, the stuff that's left over after the olives are pressed, as extra virgin and exporting it to the states. Read your labels, buy from trusted sources, and nobody gets hurt. Capiche? The first time you bought saffron, you were probably surprised to open up that tiny $20 jar and find that you needed a magnifying glass to locate the threads. Pound for pound, saffron is the most expensive spice in the world, and if you actually wanted to buy a whole pound of it, you're gonna have to shell out around $1,500. And that's just for the cheap stuff. But at any price point, you want to know that you're buying saffron rather than something like, say, corn silk that's been dyed red. We have sort of a problem here. Saffron is expensive because it's incredibly labor-intensive to harvest. Each flower has only three stigmas, and they must be hand-picked. So it's actually not that shocking that this particular spice is frequently adulterated. Real saffron is sometimes mixed with corn silk threads or coconut filaments and red dye. But sometimes the product doesn't contain any saffron at all. According to Business Insider, Spain reported in 2010 that it exported 190,000 kilograms of saffron. But Spanish farmers said they only harvest around 1,500 kilograms. Something's a little spicy about that math. Turmeric comes from the root of the plant, so it's a little easier to harvest than saffron, but it still gives food that sought-after bright yellow color. But surprise, turmeric gets adulterated too. According to natural food retailer Zazira, manufacturers sometimes add dyes like metanil yellow and Sudan red to give it an even brighter yellow color. They might also mix it with other roots like cassava, which is poisonous in its uncooked form, or related species like white ginger and wild turmeric. 
In some parts of the world, turmeric has even been mixed with lead chromate, which has a bright yellow color and can also cause lead poisoning. So really, if you want your food to be yellow, maybe just go with yellow food coloring instead. If you've ever bought dollar store honey, you are probably shocked at the price compared to a Whole Foods or Air One. Look a little closer at the label though and you'll see why. You're likely buying something called blend syrup, which you thought was just honey because it came dressed up as a cute little plastic bear. Blend syrup doesn't even list honey as the first ingredient. Number one is corn syrup and number two is honey but at least the manufacturer is being clear-ish on the label. Still, in other cases, the 100% honey you thought you were buying isn't anything close. It's basically blend syrup without the honesty. According to Insider, honey is the third most faked food in the world. In 2013, Wired UK reported that American honey is quite often doctored with corn or rice syrup and might even be flavored with unrefined sugar. Unfortunately, there's plenty of evidence that this type of honey is still being sold in the US and Canada. Kobe beef is prized for its heavy marbling, which makes it incredibly tender, flavorful, and expensive. If you order Kobe steak in a restaurant, you can expect to pay around $200 for four ounces of meat. Naturally, this makes this Wagyu variety big business for American restaurants. But here's the rub. Some American restaurants are playing fast and loose with their definitions. In 2009, the Miami New Times reported that some of the steaks sold as Kobe beef in Miami restaurants weren't technically Kobe. In order to qualify for that name, the cattle must be born and raised in the Hyogo Prefecture in Japan. It was kind of like buying champagne that's not from, you know, champagne. The $126 worth of beef. Y'all not worth it. Evidently, some restaurants claimed ignorance when it came to labeling requirements for Kobe beef. And on the surface, it might seem like a superficial distinction. But Kobe beef comes from a specific breed of cattle and must meet certain requirements. It's also closely tracked so that its limited supply can be authenticated. If you're finding discount Kobe beef, it's probably not the real deal. Americans love coffee. So what would you say if you learned that your favorite cup isn't 100% Arabica, or even 100% coffee? According to a 2020 study published in the journal Foods, coffee is often mixed not just with barley and other grains, but also with nuts, legumes, and other vegetables. Some grounds might even be adulterated with much less edible things like husks and twigs. And this particular problem will probably get worse as climate change reduces the acreage suitable for coffee growing. Studies predict a shrinkage of around 50% by 2050. In the short term, you can make sure you're getting 100% coffee by buying only whole beans, which can't be manipulated in the same way as the pre-ground stuff. But either way, it's still pretty tough to know whether it's 100% Arabica or Arabica plus something else. Enjoy your overpriced orange mocha frappuccino while you still can. One day soon, it may be more lentil than latte. Most of the doctored food that reaches the United States and other countries isn't likely to make you sick or kill you. And though obviously economically motivated, food fraud excuses can range from doing whatever it takes to stay in business to an endless greed for money. Typically though, there isn't anything willfully malicious regarding food adulteration apart from the obvious desire to pocket more of your hard-earned cash. Don't do it, kid. Sometimes, though, products are mixed with things that can truly harm you. And though these kinds of adulterations are indeed done with profit in mind, there's also a much more sinister element to them – money over human lives. In 2013, the BBC warned British Christmas shoppers to use caution when buying certain types of alcohol, particularly vodka. The warning was based on a doubling of the amount of fake vodka that was seized by the government that year, some of which contained antifreeze, industrial alcohol, and chloroform. Yes, it's that stuff they use in the movies to instantly knock a person out. Of course, it doesn't really work like that, but long-term exposure might lead to cancer. Typically, adulterated vodka is a lot cheaper, but thrifty shoppers probably won't be thinking of their Cosmo Teeny causing long-term health problems like blindness, nerve damage, or even death. If you buy free-range, pasture-raised, or grass-fed products, you pay a premium for animals that have been raised in humane conditions. All of us just have to trust that the products we buy actually are what they say they are on the label. Unfortunately, there can be a disconnect between what consumers think of as humane and what industrial producers think is humane. 
Sometimes the problem isn't even a matter of ignoring the rules, it's just that regulations don't really work the way we think they should. For example, in 2019, a company called Nelly's Free Range Eggs, which sold its product in a carton featuring a charming young child pictured in a green pasture with chickens, faced a lawsuit that alleged the company actually kept its hens in sheds, and that each bird had just over one square foot in which to go free range. It just seems so un unsanitary. Nellies argued that their hens were in fact free range according to the law, which only requires chickens to have access to the outdoors for at least six hours a day, according to J.D. Supra. The court disagreed, mostly because even if Nellies eggs were technically free range according to the law, their website implied they were much more free range than the legal standard. Just as it's hard to know based on the package what free range really entails, it's also difficult to determine whether the food you're eating is really organic or non-GMO. Most consumers think organic means grown without pesticides, but it does not. Organic farmers can use pesticides as long as they are derived from natural sources, like pyrethrins, which come from some chrysanthemum flowers. Still, according to the CDC, even those aren't totally harmless, considering that high exposure can cause dizziness, convulsions, and blacking out. Are you on drugs? Organic crops can also become contaminated by pesticides that drift over from other farms. So the presence of synthetic pesticide residue on an organic tomato may or may not mean it hasn't been grown organically. But organic foods aren't routinely tested for the presence of synthetic pesticide residue, and therein lies the problem. Even if most organic farmers play by the rules, anytime you have a high-demand, high-value product that looks exactly like a cheaper one, you're going to have brands passing that lower-value product off as the expensive one. In 2019, a Missouri farmer was accused of selling $142 million worth of organic grain, the majority of which wasn't actually organic, over several years. He later admitted to the scheme and was convicted after pleading guilty to a single count of wire fraud. When some truffle varieties cost over $96,000 a pound, the market is ripe for fraud. And sometimes cheaper species are mislabeled as more expensive ones. It could also be that the truffle oil you're buying at $60 or more a pop relies on synthetic ingredients rather than, you know, real truffles. Nobody wants to pay hundreds or thousands of dollars per pound for highly sought after truffles, only to find that they're eating something worth much less. Still, it's tough to know what you're getting from sight alone. The chemicals in truffles vary by species and where they were grown, so scientists can authenticate them with fairly high accuracy. Unfortunately, there have been times when scientists have analyzed the chemical makeup of expensive truffles only to find that they were actually a cheaper species. In some markets, a high percentage of truffles are misidentified on purpose so they can be sold at top price. That's as legitimate as anything these guys have been doing. I'm sorry. We've been scammed. With truffle oil, you expect the rich umami flavors of real truffles. But what you are usually buying is oil infused with synthetic flavor compounds, like 2,4-dithiapentane, which is the chemical found in real truffles. Some chefs don't mind, since the intense flavor of the oil means they don't need to use expensive truffles in a dish. When you're loading up your pancakes with maple syrup, the sweet liquid pouring out of the container may not be what you think. Maple syrup has a few tricks up its sleeves to try to convince you that you're getting something you're not. Usually you can tell what you're getting just by reading the label, but not always. What's the matter, your mama didn't teach you how to chug? Plenty of maple-flavored pancake syrup has no actual maple syrup in it at all. Instead, the manufacturers use corn syrup and infuse it with maple flavoring. Luckily, a quick read of the ingredients list will usually tell you if you're getting maple-flavored syrup or real maple syrup. Real maple syrup will have only one ingredient, while fake maple syrup will have a list of several ingredients. Some fake maple syrup ingredients may include high fructose corn syrup, caramel coloring, and preservatives. Maple flavored syrup tends to be cheaper and thicker and has a longer shelf life because of all the preservatives. Unfortunately, reading the label isn't always enough. If your real maple syrup doesn't taste right, it could be because it's not real maple syrup at all. Fraudulent labeling has become enough of a concern that the maple syrup industry has asked the FDA to get involved with testing for authenticity. Unless you've had wasabi in Japan, you've likely never eaten real wasabi. 
What's usually served as the spicy paste comes from the root of a plant in the same family as horseradish, so it's common for manufacturers who sell wasabi to use horseradish instead of the root from a real wasabi plant. They mix other ingredients like mustard, vinegar, coloring, and thickeners to try to make it taste more authentic. There's sometimes a minuscule percentage of wasabi mixed in with the horseradish. We're talking 3% or less. And you'd spend far more money for the real thing. So, what's the green stuff? It's wasabi. It's like mustard. Gives it a real kick. Ooh, I love mustard. Wasabi plants grow only under very specific conditions. And if you have tasted real wasabi, you probably paid a hefty price for it. It can cost upwards of $200 per pound. If you see real wasabi for sale at a price that seems too good to be true, you're probably right. Real wasabi is pale green with a flavor that starts spicy and ends sweet. The flavor of packaged wasabi isn't as strong as that of freshly grated wasabi, so it's best eaten as fresh as possible. You probably didn't realize that vanilla beans are the world's second most expensive spice after saffron. Just a single pound can cost hundreds of dollars. Thus, 99% of the vanilla extract you buy isn't from real vanilla. And one particular source of artificial vanilla may be a little too natural for sensitive tastes. Guess what? Beaver butt. There's a tiny chance the imitation vanilla you're using includes castorium, a gooey substance from a beaver's behind. It comes from the beaver's castor gland rather than its anus, but the location is a little too close for comfort for most of us. The beaver uses castorium to communicate and warn off other animals that it doesn't want in its territory. And then someone thought of using it as food for people. The FDA doesn't require castorium to be named as an ingredient, so manufacturers can list it as natural flavorings. Luckily, it's an intense process to milk the castor gland, so it's not used often. Instead, most extracts come from a synthetic version of a chemical in real vanilla called vanillin. Look for true vanilla bean extract to ensure you are getting the real deal. There's only one caviar that's allowed by the FDA to be simply labeled caviar, and that's sturgeon roe from the Caspian or Black Sea. Every other kind of fish caviar requires a more descriptive label. But thanks to a long history of mislabeling within the industry, the chance that you're being duped into shelling out for a lesser fish egg is ever-present. Cheap and expensive caviar look similar, and it can be difficult to tell the difference. Manufacturers who offer budget caviar often get their eggs from farmed fish or even other seafood like shrimp. It's not uncommon to find eggs from fish like salmon, trout, and mackerel, instead of sturgeon. If your caviar is lesser quality, it will feature ingredients like sea urchin extract and oyster extract for flavoring, and be wrapped inside a gelatin-like coating. You want a glass of water? Something to drink? Can I have a milkshake or something? Cheaper caviar will often taste sweeter, have a harder texture, and appear dull and opaque rather than shiny. You should also be suspicious if the caviar comes from somewhere like China or Vietnam. And while luxury caviar can be found in various colors, green or blue colors should be a red flag for your wallet. If you're looking for real balsamic vinegar, the first place to check is the nutrition label. If there are any other ingredients listed beside grape must, it's not authentic balsamic vinegar. You'll find all sorts of other ingredients in most balsamic vinegars on the shelf, even in those that come from Italy. Some bottles labeled as balsamic vinegar may source a small percentage of balsamic vinegar, but mostly be mixed with wine vinegar. Some companies add caramel color or thickeners to make it more balsamic-like. This condiment can run up the bill. But you don't have to spend a fortune to get 100% balsamic vinegar. Some are available for as little as $4 for a 16-ounce bottle. And you just have to read the label. I want some fancy sauce. The most expensive and most sought-after variety is traditional balsamic vinegar. Like whiskey, it goes through a barrel aging process to make it authentic. It must be aged for at least 12 years and come from either Reggio Emilia or Modena, Italy. Otherwise, it's not traditional balsamic vinegar. The traditional variety also comes in a wax-sealed bottle with a label that confirms its classification, along with an identity number and a destination of origin stamp proving it's the real deal. If it doesn't have that, you're not really getting balsamic vinegar. You may not realize that true cinnamon comes from a Sri Lankan tree called Ceylon, but even so, a large portion of the cinnamon you find in stores 
comes from Cassia tree bark, which comes from Indonesia, China, or Saigon. They're cousins from the same tree genus, but they're completely different species. And since the FDA doesn't differentiate between the two, you often won't see the species listed on the labels. Real Ceylon cinnamon has a sweet, spicy, and more floral flavor profile. It's also darker and comes in thinner rolled sticks than cassia does. Numerous studies have attributed health benefits to it, including having antimicrobial, antiparasitic, antioxidant, and free radical scavenging properties. It can also lower blood sugar, cholesterol, and blood pressure, and improve your heart health. Not too shabby. Cassia cinnamon has a stronger, more intense flavor profile with less natural sweetness. But the clincher is that it contains more coumarin than Ceylon cinnamon does. According to studies, that can make cassia varieties dangerous to consume in amounts above one teaspoon per day. Coumarin can make blood less likely to clot, increase your risk of cancer, and cause damage to your liver. Clearly, the differences between Ceylon and cassia cinnamon go far beyond flavor. When the label claims that the contents inside the container are 100% juice, it's often not quite true. All you have to do is read the label to see that the juice might not be exactly what it seems. So what's going on here? Orange Mocha Frappuccino! <laughs> if you've ever picked your own fruit, you know it's only ripe on a seasonal basis. So juice companies have had to find a way to store their product to make their fresh juice all year long. Many times you'll find that 100% juice is actually a combination of water and juice concentrate. Plus, you'll find other ingredients like natural flavors, citric acid, ascorbic acid, or pectin on the label. We've even seen mushroom extract in one juice product. We're not sure what the manufacturer's definition of 100% is, but it doesn't quite match ours. Some companies boast about the contents of their 100% orange juice, saying that it's not from concentrate. It may not be, but it's still not 100% juice either. To keep the orange juice from spoiling, companies remove oxygen during storage. And by the time they're ready to use the orange juice, it doesn't have such a great flavor anymore. At that point, they add what they call flavor packs to the juice. These packs contain chemicals like ethyl butyrate to restore the aroma or valencine to restore the flavor. Since the chemicals could have come from actual oranges, the company doesn't have to list them on the label.